Hare Krishna, my name is Jeevanath Das. I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States of America. And right now, I am sitting in Sridham Mayapur looking at the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium. Lord Chaitanya is so merciful. He's allowing me to actually live in Sridham Mayapur. But I'm here today to talk about how I came to Krishna consciousness. It's kind of interesting, maybe not so interesting to somebody else, but to me, very interesting. I was not somebody who was really a seeker. You hear so many devotees talk about that. I was looking, I was searching. I was just mainly 100% into myself. And my goal in life was either to be a rock star or a basketball player. So that were, those were my pursuits. This is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be adored. I guess I just really wanted to be Krishna. So I went to university. And it doesn't quite work out the way I thought it was going to. I tried being the rock star. I wasn't that good. I tried being the basketball player. Again, I wasn't that good. And I got hurt playing basketball, so I left university. My dreams of being rich and famous smashed. So I'm just doing basically odd jobs around Philadelphia and I'm not looking, as I said, I am not looking to be a spiritual being. I want to just enjoy, and that's it. But I'm driving down the street one day, and I've seen Hare Krishnas before, but you know what? Too weird for me. Way too weird. I'm too cool, and they're too weird. So I never stop to talk to them. But one day, I'm driving down the street, and who do I see at a traffic light? It's my best friend from high school. Now, I have to stop because I, I know him and he's standing at a traffic light. Now, he's wearing regular clothes, so nothing weird so far. I stop my vehicle. I go, buddy, how you doing? Good to see you, man. We haven't seen each other for about a year now. Now, we were really close friends. We actually traveled together in the summer before we went away to university. We were pretty tight. So I got no problem talking to him at a traffic light. What do I know? He's just a normal guy standing at a traffic light with a bucket of lollipops. I don't know. Who cares? So I stop. We get out. I talk. He starts telling me about things. Just, hey, I'm back in the area. I dropped out of school. I go, okay, me too. We have something in common again. Then he goes and he asks me a question. Now, this is not a question that you would normally ask somebody you haven't seen for a year who were best buds in high school. We played basketball together. We went to parties together. We were really tight. He says to me, are you happy? And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm not happy. I had to answer honestly. Now, usually as a cool guy, you would blow something like that off. Nobody asks you that, man. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, we're all cool. Everything good. That's the persona you want everyone to see. But he actually was a friend of mine. He asked me a deep question, so I answered it. I said, no, I'm not. Ha, ha. now it's not going to be about lollipops and old times. It's going to be about something different. He reaches into this bag and he pulls out a Back to Godhead magazine. Now it's going to get serious. He hands me the Back to Godhead magazine. Now this is where it gets interesting because sometimes you see in movies when some dramatic effect is about to happen, you know, it's like, Ooh, I'm feeling like something like that is about to happen. I'm having one of those moments. When the Back to Godhead hit my hands, I felt this, like, uh-oh, whoa. My whole life is about to change. I actually started to shake holding this magazine. Now, I still don't even know what it's about, but I could feel some difference was about to take place. My life was going to change. And then he hit me. He said, guess what? I'm a Hare Krishna. And I'm like, whoa, a Hare Krishna. He took off his cap. He showed me, yes, he had a shaved head but he was still wearing normal clothes and he's my old friend, so I will talk to him. I'm not afraid of this guy, he's my old buddy. 
So then he starts explaining to me about spiritual life. You're not your body. You're a spirit soul. You should read these magazines. Our spiritual master, he's come to enlighten us about what you're supposed to be doing in life. So I took the Back to Godhead magazine home. I listened to him. I read it. He then brought me a Bhagavad Gita. I read that. It took me four days. I read it from cover to cover. It was such an interesting book. Then it happened. I got the urge to become a Hare Krishna. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to go to what they call their Sunday feast because that's for everybody. I want to see what they're really all about. So I rock up to the temple at four o'clock in the morning for Mangal Artik. Because that's what he told me. He says, you come at 4.30, there's a special program we do every day. I want to see this. So I go to the temple. I knock on the door. Nobody answers. 4 a.m. in the morning, pitch black, nobody's answering, and I'm standing at a Hare Krishna temple. Now, this was a big leap for me, but I'm going to stick with this. I'm going through with it. Finally, somebody answers the door. He's not wearing a whole lot of clothing, but... He answers the door. He's half asleep. He lets me come in and sit down. He says, sit here and you wait. Our program will start at 4.30. I'm like, okay, sounds good. About two minutes later, he comes back with a cup. Now inside this cup is a little brown ball. We call this a Golubjaman. I didn't know what it was then, but I do know now. A Golubjaman. He says to me, I don't want you to bite into this. He says, take it and pour the whole ball in your mouth. Now it's five after four in the morning and I'm knocking back a glove jumping. And I go, whoop, whoa! Like this is one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Five after four at a Hare Krishna temple and I'm doing a glove jumping. And this is fantastic. I'm loving it. So I'm sitting there now, I've got my sugar buzz going on, so I'm wide awake. He says, just relax, wait here, 4.30, everyone will come down and I'll take you in the temple. Sure enough, I'm sitting there and I'm watching people streaming down the stairs. Now they're all wearing the sheets and they've got those colorful, the women all have those colorful things on. I'm still okay with this. I'm going through with this because I understood a little bit of what I read in that Bhagavad Gita. So finally the devotee that lets me in, he comes down the stairs and he says, come on, we'll go inside the temple. This is neat. I'm standing in this dark room and all I hear is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now I haven't actually chanted on the beads yet, so this is a new experience for me. But I'm hearing this buzzing sound and it's, it's kind of neat. I'm standing in the temple room, it's pitch black. And then I hear the conch shell ring. And I'm a, the devotee said to me, you're about to see God. Now, okay, now this is where it gets a little bit funny because I'd seen Bhagavad Gita, so I understood that Krishna is a blue guy and he stands on a chariot. I understood this. So the curtains open and I'm ready to see God. And who is it? It's Lord Jagannath, Baladeva and Subhadra. Now I really have to say, do you really want to go through with this? Because this isn't the blue God. This is a whole different God. I'm saying, wait, it's okay. Everything else made total sense. Uh, it's not that bad. Why not? Why not? Why can't God look like that? So I accept that. Now the Kirtan's starting. Now in the Philadelphia Temple Room, which is where I was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the United States, the Temple Room had floorboards and actually boards. So when people jumped up and down, the boards jumped a little too. They bounced up and down. So basically anybody who was in this Kirtan, they had to dance because the floorboards bounced you up and down. So I'm in the middle of this kirtan, not knowing what I was supposed to be doing, but everyone's jumping up and down, so I'm jumping up and down. The floorboards assisted me, but I got into it, and later I jumped as well. So the kirtan was ecstatic. I'm having such a great time. This is it. This is where I'm meant to be. I get this. I'm enjoying it. I go home. It took me a day to get it together, but I came back. I moved in. It's a Friday. I'm in the temple. I'm in there by... 7 o'clock in the morning, by 8 30, 9 o'clock, I'm shaved up. I'm Bhakta Joe. Why not? Then somebody comes out to me and says, Hey, Bhakta Joe, tomorrow we're going out on book distribution. It's called Sankirtan. It pleases the spiritual master. Do you want to come? And I'm like, Sure, why not? So 
I get dropped off on Saturday morning, and guess where I get dropped off? In my old neighborhood. I'm shaved up as a Hare Krishna in my old neighborhood, and I'm doing Sankirtan. Why not? Right into the fire. You must surrender, so I do. And I really have a great time. I do pretty good at this thing. I mean, this is kind of fun. I like talking, so why not? The day is over. The next day they tell me, Bhakti Joe, you actually did the second best of anybody in the temple. So, of course, the devotees like me because I'm pretty good at the Sankirtan thing. So within a couple of weeks, they say, hey, Bhakti Joe, we go out to the airport and distribute Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita and other books, do you want to come out? And I'm like, sure, why not? So out to the airport I go, Bhakti Joe, he has a book bag full of books. He has Bhagavad Gita and he has other books that he really can't even pronounce yet, but he's going to distribute these books. So Bhakti Joe actually does okay. And the joke around the temple is, here's Bhakti Joe out at the airport distributing books that he can't even pronounce yet. And that was quite funny to everyone. So the first time I pull out a Chaitanya Chardam Rita out of my bag, of course I can't say it, so I just go, check this out, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? And of course when I open up the book and I'm looking at the pictures, this is the first time I've seen the pictures. So I'm getting very excited looking at these pictures. And the people are looking at me going, wow, He's pretty excited about this. This must be pretty cool. So I'm showing the pictures. They're getting excited. I'm getting excited. And so, of course, because of all this excitement, I do pretty good out at the airport. This is my start to Krishna consciousness. So the first time I see Srila Prabhupada, this is at New York Rathiatra in 1976. Now, the first time I saw him, this is not. This is probably the second time. I saw him quickly walk by one time, but this time is Guru Puja. Now, I'm not familiar with Srila Prabhupada, so I really want to get an up close and personal something, a start to my relationship with Srila Prabhupada. Guru Puja. Now, this is New York Rathiatra, 1976. It's packed with sannyasis. And I'm still Bhakta Joe. I'm going to get initiated the next day. I'm standing in the back and I'm thinking, I can't even see Srila Prabhupada on the Vyasa sign. There's so many devotees in front of me. But guess what? I'm going to get as close as I possibly can because I want to see Srila Prabhupada. I want to feel his energy. I want to be that close. So I start working my way through the crowd, pushing, pushing, pushing a little bit. I'm getting pushed back. I go through all the regular devotees, so to speak, and now I get to the sannyasis who are right around Srila Prabhupada. Now it's tight, it's tight. I don't know how, but somehow or other, all these sannyasis, they took Dunda defense training. I don't know how, if it's official, but they all seem to know how to use a Dunda to defend. So I'm starting to push through these sannyasis and I'm starting to feel Dundas hitting me in the knees, a little bit higher, in the stomach, but they're not letting me through. Like, who is this guy pushing through? But you know what, I used to play sports. So I'm not bothered by a few elbows to the ribs or now, it's dundas to the ribs. I don't care. I'm going to see Srila Prabhupada. So I push through, push through. Dundas are whacking me, whacking me, whacking me. Finally, I get to where I can see Srila Prabhupada and I just stand there and I'm gawking, I'm gazing and I'm just totally stunned to see Srila Prabhupada, pure devotee. And it was more than I expected. And Srila Prabhupada was looking out into all the devotees. And we were so packed in that during the Guru Puja, nobody was dancing. We were all so tight there. So Prabhupada then, he motioned. Now because I am telling this story, I'm going to tell you that Srila Prabhupada looked at me and motioned to me. As if nobody else was there. Because that's what I felt. Prabhupada looked out and he went, signifying dance. Dance. Don't just stand there. Dance. So I took that as a personal instruction, and that is my only personal instruction from Srila Prabhupada. He told me to dance, and I take that very personal. So I try to move to the best of my ability in every single kirtan. I don't stand still because Prabhupada told me to dance. And that was the first interaction that I had with Srila Prabhupada.
Okay, so this is a Sankirtan story when I first started distributing books in the airport. Now this is in Philadelphia airport and sometimes at the airport it was rather slow. There wasn't a whole lot of traffic. So basically we would, we would approach people as they came off of the airplane into the concourse and then we would approach them because they were kind of dazed and confused and easier to stop. But because it was so slow, I was approaching people heading for their airport, for their airplane to head out. So they have an agenda, they're focused, they know where they're going, they got to get there, there by time, and it's a hurry, hurry, everything like that. So to stop them wasn't so easy. So this one gentleman, he's coming towards the spot, he's booking it, he's talking really, he's walking really fast, really fast. So I say, hey, sir, sir, hold up, hold up. And he swings his arm and knocks the book out of my hand. And I do believe it was a Bhagavad Gita. And it went flying onto the ground. And then he took a few more steps and he was on the ground. He had a heart attack and landed on the ground in the concourse there, clutching his heart. Now I'm standing there, just standing over him. And I'm still a new devotee. Now I've just sort of heard about the Yamadudas and Yamaraj kind of far out stuff and I'm looking at this guy and he's holding his heart and he's going <clears throat> like that and then all of a sudden he looked up and he let out one of the most screeching gut curdling screams I've ever heard and he went no and he left his body now I'm standing there watching all this and I'm remembering Yamaraj and the Yamadudas and I'm thinking I just witnessed Bhagavatam in real life. The Yamadudas came and took this guy out of his body and I was standing there watching. Now devotees always come up to me and say, what would you do next? I said, well of course I picked up my Gita and I started distributing to the crowd that was standing around watching this guy on the ground. What else do you do as a devotee? You know it's done, he's finished, he's left his body. Time to distribute Prabhupada's books. So that's what I did. But that was one time when Krishna showed me Bhagavatam is real, it's not stories, and I got to see it firsthand. It gets better and then it got worse, but guess what? It got better again. So. Krishna and Prabhupada have allowed me to now live in Sri Mayapur, and I, guess what? Bhakta Joe, who's now Jivanath Das, who is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, is getting to distribute books again. So I've come full circle in my Krishna consciousness, and I can proudly say thanks to Srila Prabhupada, thanks to Lord Chaitanya, thanks to Sri Krishna. I'm actually experiencing that blissful life. I'm almost like a rock star. I'm almost like a basketball player because I jump around in Kirtan and I get to lead Kirtan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.